and hello YouTube. This is Thomas Judge back once again after quite some time. Apologies for everyone who has been wondering where I've been for the last nine months. It's been a long and horrible story that isn't very interesting. Uh, in a nutshell, 2020 really destroyed a fair chunk of my personal and professional life, uh, but I'm currently trying to bounce back. Anyway, I'm coming back strong with, to start with, a new YouTube mini-series. This one should be something that anyone following me on Twitter would probably have guessed I was building up towards. It's a reading order of the Top Cow Artifactivist. Now, the Artifactivist is my name for it. Most people would probably just call it the Witch Played Universe, the Darkness Universe, or even the Top Cow Universe. Those are all perfectly understandable descriptions, however I don't think they're accurate. I think I'm going to be able to show you that the full reading order for this little comic universe is both much larger than just Witchblade, and yet much smaller than all of Top Cow. Today's video is the first of 12, by which I mean this particular video is video zero, and then there are 11 more installments, and it will provide a bit of background into what exactly the Artifactiverse is, and how a reading order like this will actually work. For those of you that have seen other videos on my channel, you will have seen me do really detailed, comprehensive reading maps like this before, and this is more of the same. After this video, the next one will actually dive into the map I've created, but remember the things that I talk about here are the core concepts you need to understand to understand the Artifactiverse at all. I'm going to refer to these concepts and ideas throughout the rest of the series without explaining them again, so it is really important to get them in at the start. Every video in this series will also contain a link to this one, so that new viewers can start here and pick up the basics. Okay, well with that out of the way, let's begin with the basics. What is the Artifactivist? Well, to understand this, we need to understand something that happened way back in 1992, which is the foundation of Image Comics. Now, there are literally hundreds of videos on the internet that talk about the fascinating story of Image Comics and its early years. I'm not going to do that here. All you need to know is that Image Comics is a big American publisher, and together with DC and Marvel, it's one of the big three comic companies. That's how successful it's been. Now, when it started back in 1992, it had five main partners running it. Each of these five comic creators set up their own mini imprint within Image Comics. There are two we need to be aware of. The first one is Wildstorm Productions by Jim Lee. And then the second one is Top Cow Productions by Mark Silvestri, which we'll get to in a second. Now, Wildstorm has a lot of cool stuff in it, like The Authority, Stormwatch, planetary and so on. They have a huge closed universe of comics that lasted for almost 20 years and one day I'll do a video series on those. It's around 2,000 issues though so that's a little while off. They're now owned by DC which is where Jim Lee, their creator, currently is and they're currently basically a mothballed comics universe. That's all we need to know about them for now but keep them in the back of your mind for when we get into the next video in this series as they're going to come up a few times. Now more importantly is the second imprint we need to talk about. That's Top Car Productions. It's the main thing we need to be aware of, and it's still a huge part of Image Studios, still run by Mark Silvestri. They've been going strong for almost 30 years now, and in that time they've produced a lot of great comics. Um, the important thing to be aware is that these comics haven't all formed one continuous universe. Unlike the other comics in other image studios like Wildstorm, for example, they're not all necessarily interlinked. They haven't even formed a universe that's mainly all self-contained, with a few spin-off titles here or there, like DC or Marvel have done. Instead, Top Cow is split into several very specific, sizable branches or families. I'll list them here, but the important thing to note is that these are pretty much my own names for them. The actual way they're categorised on something like Comicsology is much less organised than my method, and is much more of a free-for-all. So there's the Artifactivist, which we're going to be covering in this series. There are two iconic figures that most people know from this part of the Top Cow stable, and that is Sarah Pizzini, the Witchblade, and Jackie Estacado, the Darkness. If you think of Sarah as the heart of the Artifactivist, Jackie is the soul. One thing I will point out, and you'll need to take my word for it for now, is that the character of Aphrodite, she's the one in the thumbnail of this video, is actually even more key than either of the others in many ways. You can consider her the mind of the Artifactivist, but more on that in later videos. Anyway, this series of videos will cover everything you ever wanted to know about them and more. 
Next up is the Edenverse. Um, this is a separate part of the Top Cow Stable, which is a fascinating world that combines Postal, Think Tank, The Tithe, and Samaritan Veritas, amongst others. Um, almost everything here is written by Matt Hawkins, who's um, very high up within Top Cow. Next, there is what I call the Cedric verse, and I resent people online referring to it as a rather derogatory perverse. The Cedric verse is everything by the amazing Stefan Cedric and his wife Linda Cedric. Now, it contains Sunstone, Swing, Sugar, Bloodstain, it's going to contain Punderworld, all that sort of stuff. Those names, Stefan Cedric and his wife, they're people that we need to remember, well, Stefan at least, because he's going to come up a lot in video 7 to video 10. Next up, there is the Aspenverse, totally separate universe again. This contains Fathom, Soulfire, and Shrugged, amongst others. There is a hint of a Witchblade crossover here too, but we're going to cover that in video 4. Next up, there's Joe's Comics, which was a short-lived imprint of comics penned by the legendary J.M. Straczynski. This is where the amazing Rising Stars exists, as well as iconic favourites like Midnight Nation. And finally, there is Top Cow Productions, which is kind of a catch-all sin bin for all the miniseries, one-offs, and original graphic novels that don't fit in any of the other categories I have here. Increasingly, more and more of Top Cow's short-lived series seem to live here. So looking at all this, you can see that the artifact of is one branch and a one branch only of a very large library of comics indeed. Now, don't let this worry you. I have read pretty much the entire Top Cow library, and I've pulled out the 902 artifact of issues for you. Now that meant reading and mapping 902 single issues, and I know that seems like a lot, but those of you who are watching who've seen my DC New 52 reading guide, you'll know that last year I read and mapped almost 4,000 DC comics to bring my reading guide to you, the people. So that's all the background you need to understand the artifact of this, or at least to get started. Now, before we close for today, we need to discuss a few things you need to know to use this guide. It's like a guide for the guide, if you like. Now, these principles are the same for all my reading guides, so if you ever watch my other series, you will have seen this and you can skip the rest. I'll link to the introduction to my DC New 52 map in the description, as this has an even more detailed explanation of the points that I'm going to try and cover here as quickly as I can. The first point is about volumes. Volumes is a major problem that plagues new comic readers. That's because the word volume is used to refer to a comic run, so we can see here that Uncanny X-Men is grouped in several volumes or eras. But the word volume is also used to refer to individual trade paperback collections as well. That means you can go onto Amazon to order, for example, Volume 2 of Volume 4 of Uncanny X-Men. Confusing, right? Or if you want to buy Volume 1 of Uncanny X-Men, there are at least three or four different trade paperbacks you could end up with. This is annoying, and so for the avoidance of doubt, I use the term volume with a big V to discuss the era of a particular comic, which normally starts with an issue number one. I then use the term volume with a small V to discuss the collected editions within that series, although to be totally honest, I often just use the term collected edition, because I think it's just much more accurate and less confusing. So for example here, when we look at the Uncanny X-Men, the trade collection Superior Volume 2 Apocalypse Wars is Volume 2, and there's Volume with a small v, of Volume 4, where Volume 4 is Volume with a big V. If I was doing a reading guide on this, I would probably call that Trade Paperback Collection 2, off of Volume 4, Volume with a big V. I know this confusing to take in if you're new to comics, but it's an important thing to know. The second thing that's really important to know about my guide is that I design it for readers like me. I'm what I call a type J reader, as opposed to what I call a type P reader. Now, type J and P readers are two ends of a spectrum. Type P readers like their reading orders to be absolutely perfect and rigorously correct. And type J readers are much more relaxed and unbothered about the order of things and ideas like comic continuity. I strongly believe it's better to be in the middle somewhere, and I personally lean a bit to the type J style. You see, the thing about being a type P reader is that it can paralyze you with indecision. If you want to read every single issue in perfect chronological order in relation to every other single issue of every other series that might ever intersect with it, well, that's an impossible task. For example, I've been reading orders made by Type P comic collectors 
that talk about reading half of one issue, then reading another issue, then coming back to finish the first issue. To me, this isn't fun. To me, this ruins the pace of the story. And so in most cases, or not quite all, I just tend to read series by series or trade collection by trade collection. That's how this reading, this reading guide is for the most part. That's the way it's designed. My map is designed largely around the existing trade paperback collection that you can buy at retail. And when we have long stretches of uncollected issues, or if we have particular bits that you need to be a bit more precise about in order to avoid huge spoilers, um, then it gets a little bit more detail, but you'll see that when that happens. Now, those two things can seem like a lot to take in, and that's because they are. Um, and for lots of people, those are new concepts. Well, don't worry about it too much. And remember, you can always watch this introduction video or my DC New 52 introduction video, which is linked in the description, if you want to understand a bit more depth on those terms. And well, with that out of the way, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the ultimate Artifactiverse reading map. Oh, wow, that's a bit small, isn't it? Let's, let's see what we can do about zooming in. Well, let's zoom out and have a look at it here. That's the whole thing. It's quite nice, quite simple. And what we'll do, we'll just zoom in. And for most of these videos, we're going to be zoomed right in to give you guys a good idea what this looks like. Now, we're going to be diving into this in a huge amount of details over the next 11 videos. But for now, let's just look at the six discrete phases I want to show you. We're going to start here in a phase I call Before the Rise. This is covered in videos one and video two. Then we're going to go down here to this long sprawling mess called the Origins Era. This is covered in videos three to six. Next is the phase I call the Artifacts Era. This is covered in videos seven and eight. Next is the phase that I'm going to be calling the Rebirth Era. This is covered in video nine. Video 10 is the phase that I call After the Fall, which is here. And the final video in the series, video 11, is going to be called Reboot and Out of Continuity. It's also going to contain my final thoughts on the entire Top Cow artifact of this. Now, the colours that I've assigned are pretty arbitrary, as are the colours of the circles that I've used. Um, I keep each line or series to a particular colour, but that's about it. One thing to keep in mind is that unlike my DC New 52 reading order, where there were collected editions of virtually all 3,600 issues, there are really big swathes of the artifact of this which aren't collected. These uncollected or orphaned issues are indicated here by using dotted lines for the circles that they're in. I still cover them in the map, but I tend to actually group them by what I view as the best story arc to read them in. Um, it's all subjective, but if you want to read them, you have to buy them as singles or floppies. And I'll discuss this more as we go through the map. Finally, one last point. There are probably some mini-series or one-shots that I've missed. Tracking down the, run the random crossovers and one-offs that happened in the 90s has been really tricky, and there always appears to be a new one or two I hadn't been aware of. In the end, I thought I'd just start making the video series once the new issue stopped coming out of the woodwork, but even though I've probably caught 99% of the artefacts artifactiverse issues here. If there are any I've missed, please feel free to let other viewers know in the comments section. As always, this map is available on my website for you to download free of charge. If you want to download it or print it out to follow along, please do so. It covers 902 single comic issues, so I don't blame you. And with that, we're finished with the introduction for this series. I'll be back tomorrow with the first video diving into the map, which is on the Before the Rise era. As always, please like, comment and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter where I tend to post a one tweet daily review of whatever I've read that day. Given that I read on average around half a dozen comic issues a day, it's a great way to see what I'm up to and to get an idea for what future videos are in the pipeline. If you'd like to support the channel, it's easy. Head over to Amazon and pick up the first volume of my pro superhero novel, No Gods or Kings. This is a story about a world like our own, but where superhumans are a reality and how the world changes as a result. And it's planned as a series of nine novels. The first four are already released. They cost less than a dollar each. They're free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And it would be a huge amount to me if you were to leave a review of it as well. If you'd like to read a free excerpt of the first book, that can be found on the same website as this reading map, which is at www.nogodsorkings.com. The link will be in the description below. 
Until next time, everyone, stay classy. <laughs>